She was born on the 18th of December, 1724, at Leicester House in England. She died on the 19th of December, 1751, the day after her 27th birthday, in Copenhagen, Denmark. Her husband was Frederick V of Denmark. They had five children together, Christian, Crown Prince of Denmark, Sophia Magdalena, Queen of Sweden, Wilhelmina Caroline of Denmark, Christian VII of Denmark, and Louise of Denmark. Princess Louise was born as the fifth daughter and youngest child of the Prince and Princess of Wales. George of Great Britain and Caroline of Ansbach. She was born 10 years after her paternal grandfather, George Louis of Hanover, had succeeded to the thrones of Great Britain and Ireland in 1714 as George I, and her father had become Prince of Wales and moved to London with his family. Her father had a strained relationship with his own father and in 1717, after an argument, the king had banished his own son from court. She was baptised, Louisa, at Leicester House on the 22nd of December. Princess Louise had six older siblings who lived to adulthood. Of these, Louise lived only with the two youngest, William and Mary, and their parents at Leicester House. They constituted the younger set, born in London, in contrast to the older set, born in Hanover, whom King George I had cruelly separated from their parents in 1717. On the 11th of June 1727, when Louise was two years old, her grandfather George I died and her father ascended the throne as King George II. When Louise was almost 13 years old, her mother Queen Caroline died and she was then raised mainly by her older sister, Princess Caroline. In 1743, a dynastic marriage was negotiated between Louise and Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark and Norway. The marriage was proposed by Great Britain from political reasons. The Danish government was in favour of the proposal, while Frederick's father, King Christian VI, was reluctant, but he was convinced, as he hoped the marriage would lead to British support for his son's claim to the throne of Sweden. On a more personal level, there were hopes that marriage would suppress the frequent drinking and debauched behaviour of the prince. On the 19th of October, the 18-year-old Princess Louise left London and began her journey towards Copenhagen. They held their official entry into the Danish capital on the 11th of December to great cheers from the population. The same day a wedding ceremony was held in the chapel of the Christiansborg Palace. After the wedding, the newlyweds took up residence at Charlottenburg Palace. Here, their home quickly became the setting for a lively and entertaining court, which differed greatly from the rigid and heavy etiquette that prevailed at the court of Louise's in-laws. They lived here until 1745, when they could move into the completed Prince's Mansion, a city mansion located just across from the Christiansborg Palace. Although the marriage was arranged, the couple had got along quite well and, at least during the first years, their relationship was apparently 
amicable, although Frederick came to feel high regard for her and always treated her with kindness. He reportedly was not in love with her and continued his debauched lifestyle. However, Frederick was comfortable with her and Louise pretended not to notice his adultery and random liaisons. Louise quickly made herself popular in the Danish court and her father-in-law remarked that she seemed to him kind and agreeable. She was also met with great enthusiasm from the citizens of Copenhagen due to her natural and straightforward behaviour. She made an effort to learn Danish right from her arrival. At the death of Christian IV, on the 6th of August 1746, her husband ascended the throne as King Frederick V and Louise became Queen of Denmark and Norway at the age of 21. The ceremonies of the accession to the throne were concluded as the new King and Queen was solemnly anointed in the chapel of Frederiksborg on the 4th of September the following year. Queen Louise was very popular in Denmark and the great popularity of the royal couple had been attributed to Louise. She had a vivacious personality, allowing her to socialise easily with others. She was described as well-educated and good at conversations. Not beautiful, but very dignified and well suited as her role as Queen. A Swedish diplomat stationed in Denmark described her as She has good sense and is easy with words, friendly in tone, known how to converse on many subjects and can speak several languages. She seldom leaves anyone without saying something nice. She very much enjoys dances and she dances well. She has a good temper and is known for her piety and excellent qualities. She finds pleasure in reading and music. She plays the chord well and teaches her daughters to sing. In 1751, Queen Louise unsuccessfully opposed the planned dynastic marriage between her daughter, the five-year-old princess Sophie Magdalena, and the heir apparent to the Swedish throne, Crown Prince Gustav, later King Gustav III. She feared her daughter would not be treated well by the Queen of Sweden, Louisa Ulrika, who was known for her anti-Danish views. That same year, Louise became seriously ill with a pinched umbilical hernia while pregnant. With her sixth child, the court surgeon operated on her but could not save her life, nor the life of her unborn child. She died at Christiansborg Palace on the 19th of December, 1751, the day after her 27th birthday. The news of the popular Queen's death was met with dismay at court and sincere mourning among the people who had come to appreciate their Queen during her short tenure. After lying in state with great pomp, she was interned in the cathedral on the island of Zeeland, the traditional burial site for Danish monarchs since the 15th century. Frederick survived Louise by 14 years, although initially unwilling to remarry a foreign princess. A new marriage for the king was arranged. The king's second marriage took place on the 8th of July, 1752, to Frederick the Great of Prussia's sister-in-law, Duchess Juliana Maria of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel. The marriage was frowned upon by the people, who saw it too early for the king to remarry. And this concludes the video. 
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.